In the world of astronomy, a new discovery has left scientists baffled and could potentially change the way we understand the universe. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has unveiled six galaxies that seem too big to exist in the early universe. These galaxies formed in the universe's first 700 million years and appear to be up to 100 times more massive than what standard cosmological theories predict. What exactly are these galaxies, and how did they grow so quickly in the early universe? That is what we are going to discuss in this episode. But before we continue, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude towards our channel's supporters. Your generous support allows us to continue bringing you informative and quality content. We truly appreciate your contribution. Thank you so much for being a part of our community and for supporting our work. When NASA's James Webb Space Telescope released its first view of the early universe in July 2022, astronomers were quick to analyze the data. They identified about a dozen objects that looked bright and red, indicating they could be massive and far away. After measuring the amount of light each object emits at various wavelengths, they found six galaxies that appear to be up to 100 times more massive than standard cosmological theories predict. These galaxies formed in the universe's first 700 million years and appear to hold up to 10 billion times the mass of our sun in stars. One of them might even contain the mass of 100 billion suns. This discovery is perplexing since adding up the stars in those galaxies would exceed the total amount of mass available in the universe at that time. The standard theories of cosmology suggest that matter in the universe clumped together slowly, with small structures gradually merging to form larger ones. However, the existence of these massive galaxies challenges this theory since they seem to have formed too quickly. One explanation is that there's another unknown way to form galaxies, a fast track that creates monsters. Another possible explanation is that some of these galaxies host supermassive black holes in their cores. What looks like starlight could instead be light from the gas and dust those black holes are devouring. James Webb has already seen a candidate for an active supermassive black hole even earlier in the universe's history than these galaxies are. Finding a lot of supermassive black holes at such an early era would also be challenging to explain, but it wouldn't require rewriting the standard model of cosmology the way extra-massive galaxies would. To know for sure what these distant objects are, astronomers need to confirm the galaxy's distances and masses using spectra and more precise measurements of the galaxy's light across many wavelengths. James Webb has taken spectra for a few of these galaxies already and more should be coming. With any luck, a year from now, we'll know a lot more. So stay tuned to any updates or developments related to the James Webb Space Telescope's observations of these massive galaxies in the early universe. And now, it's time to answer one of your questions. This comment comes from Dexter Datterall, who brings up a controversial point about the recent discovery of massive galaxies in the early universe. Dexter says, this only proves that the universe did not come from the Big Bang. Thank you for bringing up this important point, Dexter. While the discovery of these supermassive galaxies is certainly intriguing, it does not disprove the Big Bang theory. The Big Bang theory is supported by a wealth of observational evidence, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation and the observed abundance of light elements in the universe. Additionally, the Big Bang theory provides a framework for understanding the evolution of the universe from its earliest moments to the present day. However, the discovery of these galaxies does challenge our current understanding of galaxy formation in the early universe. It's possible that there are additional processes at work beyond what we currently understand, and further research will be needed to fully explain the observed phenomena. Thank you for your comment, Dexter, and for keeping the conversation going. And that wraps up today's video. If you have any questions or thoughts you'd like to share, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it with family and friends who might be interested. Thank you for watching.